Hi, Heather. Hello. We met recently. Very recently. <laughs> Actually, a few hours ago. Yeah. Kathy introduced you to us. Coincidentally, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if you were coming today, but I had you on my call list. So I was happy to see you this morning. Uh, I really wasn't to... coming. I was, <laughs> Kathy, Kathy I was kind of scared to go. Oh, okay. Because of the recent, you know. Yeah, okay. Understood. Uh, issues that they had down in Chapman Name. Great. So I was really happy to, to actually meet you um, for the first time. And uh, that actually saved me actually having to call. It, so. was good, it was it was good <laughs> and, and when i thought um when i thought about it when it was there i realized it was a good thing that i did come yeah yeah it was a good and thing. then the other alenians too so got an opportunity to see you yeah um, i mean you what i found from past experience sometimes people see a name on paper they don't know who but they don't know who it is but when they see a face oh that's heather yeah. we went to school together yeah. And it's not that it is not that they would not contribute or donate, even if it was just a name on a paper. But then they're even more inspired and motivated to give because they remember that person whom they went to school with, whom they were with, whom they see. So, uh, giving a, a visual or an interview is a good way of actually introducing Heather to the community. So Heather, tell us, I want to know who exactly is Heather Ramden and I want us to go back to your days as a child, going to school, growing up in primary and then transitioning from primary school to Aline school. What was it like as a student going to school at the island. But before you get there, I want you to tell us about you. You introduce us your name and tell us, share with us who Heather Ramden is. Okay. Um Heather Ramden is pretty much as you see me here. Um I am a parent have two children, um, Deborah and Antonio. I am a proud Alenian, let me say that. Um, a lot of my good memories in my youth okay. are from Alin, from um, being there and the different things that happened when I was, you know, my sisters all went to Alexander. Okay. How many of them are there? Three of them. Three. Well, three that were in the same household. Okay. So they went to Alexander and I was an odd man. Um, I was the one who went to Ali. Okay. Um, so we always had this battle where my grandmother, used, we were raised by my grandmother. Three sisters, three girls living in the same household, had them being one of them. Four, there were four of us. There were four. Yeah. But three of you were living. F four, four girls in the same household, three of them went to Alexander. Okay. I was the only one going to Alexander. Ah, right. So t tell us that story. Yeah. It Did was... you live within that jurisdiction, that, that geographic area of the Ali school? No, we were living in Haggett Hall at the time. Haggett Hall? Yeah. Okay. With my grandmother. Um, we had the village shop. So, um, we would Robert Hall, did you? Robert's Road Haggett Hall. Probably okay, okay. Yeah. That's where you grew up. Yeah, yeah. So, um my grandmother she used to run the shop in the in the area. You know, you know in that those days there were no supermarkets, like how we have supermarkets now, so you you know, people could come to the shop and credit. Okay, they used to credit a lot, yes. Um, we would, um, as children, we would help out in the shop and all that stuff. But when it came to school, um, 
on evenings, my grandmother would expect that if they get home at 4.30, I would get home at 4.30 too. But they were coming from Spitestown where there are all these Spitestown buses. And it was coming from St. Andrew where we had to flight for our buses. I remember many evenings running to catch the um, church bus, St. Andrew church bus. And a whole set of us running to catch the church bus and it was late. It's always late. Right, right. <laughs> then there was the one coming from Shorey Village. Um, so the church bus sometimes would turn around at the school, okay. but the Shorey Village would stop at the bus stop. So many evenings we were running from the school to the bus stop, back to the school to get the, it, depending on which bus, you know, it was really, really difficult. The buses were awful. Right. Um, so getting home. But, so by the time I got home, my grandmother got her door shut and my sister's inside. Uh, so I was always the outsider. I was always the one who was late. And you got you. So, but where did you attend primary school? Belmont Primary. Belmont Primary. But I was only there for about two years. Okay. I was actually born in England. Oh, yes. I see. Okay, okay. So um, you're a British citizen? I am a Barbadian proud. Proud Barbadian. My parents were Barbadian. My entire family is Barbadian. Um, even though they would have moved, a lot of them would have moved to England at some point. But I'm a proud Barbadian. Proud Barbadian. Yes. Okay. So, you enter Aline's school having, you spent two years at Belmont. Yes. Um, from class two, class three, and class four. Three, uh, uh, well, let's say two and a half. We are no. obviously, we are, we are now in the 70s. Yes. Prior to coming into Aline, this would be in the 70s or 1975. 75, I was there um, about 75 to 77. Okay. So, yeah. And then transitioning now, to, to the, the Alan School. Um, did you welcome the news that you got a place at Alan School? Or you wanted to be with your sisters? No. Um, because I had come from England not very long ago, the first struggle was to... Oh, so you spent, you spent some of your childhood years in, after being birthed in England, in England, yes. in England? I came to England, Barbados, when I was nine. Okay, hence why you only had two years at yeah. Belmont. So your other sisters, they were born in England? Too, so? um, two of them. So life started from you, for you in Barbados? At age nine. At age nine, okay. The first hurdle was to get over the differences in cultures in the primary school mm -hmm. the primary school system the children we used to play um, like those round games where you stand up in a circle and and um, this and and, yeah. and and then you got the going around and it was it was all strange it was all this strange is in Barbados, in Barbados, Barbados yes culture. right okay. and then um, they used to laugh at our accent so I quickly learned to speak Bajan okay okay yeah they, they as in the students, the students used to yeah primary and, and yeah secondary. they would mock okay. you and it was uh, and then we write differently. We're taught to write differently in England. Okay, okay. Uh, we had not learned yet how to join our letters. So I got a lot of lashes on my hands at the, in primary school for my writing. Mm -hmm. So that was really, really different for me. So after sitting the exam and passing for Aline, I was just proud. I was just proud of myself. I, Sitting the exam as in the common entrance. Common exam. entrance. Okay. And because I was told it's a good school, um, and because we had to do a lot of catching up, you know that the Barbadian system of teaching is more intense than okay. outside okay. a lot of the outside world. So, yeah. So I I was pretty happy. Okay. I didn't know the difference anyway. I didn't know the difference. I didn't. I, I had not really heard much about the other schools. 
Right, right, right. And I wasn't sure that I really wanted to be with my sisters anyway. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to be settling yes. to the Ali school. Walk us through the journey from first to fifth form. How was it? How was it going to school in Bell Place, St. Andrew? What are some of the childhood memories that you have of Ali in school with your peers? that you care to share with us all right let me first talk about my journeys getting there yeah that, <sighs> that distance okay. um from Haggett hall um where we lived we could not just we, we didn't live on a bus route per se we had to walk all the way out to the front road um out to map hill okay yes Catching a bus was really difficult because, you, I mean, you had to be there really, really early because the buses are coming out from Bayfield and Kendall and so kept getting there, then getting into town and you had to walk from the Fairchild Street bus terminal to Pelican. Okay. So that was another set of walking with a big heavy bag. <laughs> and then when you, like, on the route of the... Shorey Village bus or the school bus that the school bus would take there was the tobacco company mm -hmm. and the Ben factory yeah. so those are memories that really stand out in my brain because I could not stand the smell of either one the Ben factory was where exactly? where Juicy where um, Buster is now this is in Green Hill? No? Green Hill yeah right okay okay and the tobacco factory was, was like a two two um buildings, buildings down okay, or something like that okay. and every time we got near there i would be like <gasps> and i got hold my breath until we pass it and the bus don't oh, stop wait, wait, this, is the, this is the tobacco or the yes tobacco? both of them okay, i okay. could not stand the smell of either of them ah, okay. they've been in fact we had this sweet sweet smell and then the tobacco was awful to me and I could not stand the smell of either of those factories okay, okay. so every morning I used to go to, sleep, to school with uh, I used to have um, motion sickness okay right so I used to be so that was like the first few um, like first couple of years and stuff but then we quickly learned to catch the Bathsheba bus okay. from Bridgetown. From Bridgetown, okay. The problem with the Bathsheba bus is that you have to get off at the corner, that corner, down in, just before you go down in Bathsheba. Yeah, uh, and right, that would go down the hill. Yeah, because then the, the, you got to catch, catch a spike sound bus to go to St. Andrew from there. Oh, right, because obviously the Bathsheba bus would not go straight down into Belgium. Right. I'm following you now. Right. So you would hear about the people who used to talk about the sand trucks yeah, and, I, I, and, and bumming lists with the sand trucks and stuff. You had that experience? Oh, yes, I was I one. I want to hear about that. <laughs> Julia, Julia, I was Julia, one, Julia. yes. <laughs> Shoot, so I want to hear what your experience was bumming a lift. We lift did a lot of that too. And what led you to Bama Lift? Because obviously, because the, no the children used to there used to be crowds of children at that corner, and the lifts. Sometimes teachers would pass and, and give you a ride. When we talk about the sand truck, we are talking about a big truck laden with sand because the sand was being mined in St. Andrew. I think the trucks going down at that time were empty. Going down, as yeah, going down they were going to St. Andrew to collect. collect sand. Ah, yeah, so that obviously made it convenient yes. because you can fit in, yes. Okay, and the guys would just stop, and students would just yes. crowd in. <laughs> crowd in. <laughs> it was and fun, that would be the raid, yeah, to school. Okay, or, yeah. um, you know, as I said, you just bum a lift, so you have many a day raiding in the sand truck, yes, great. <laughs> Okay. I guess, I, guess um, I would not have wanted my children to know that when they were going to school because as times got different, you could not bum lifts. You know, it was becoming yeah, more and more dangerous. But, you know, God protected us. Believe me, he did. And speaking yeah. of other Alenians, this, this, this is a cherished memory. This memory of the, the Santra. Many Alenians within your era 
would mm-hmm. often recount those experiences. Yeah, yeah, it so was it's, it's something special. Yes. To so, <laughs> journey from home to school it was wasn't interesting. Always no, it was it was it, it was sometimes interesting and fun. Um, there was also the school buses that would race coming down Sturges and and coming home from on evenings. But as I said, God protected us, and I am convinced that He is the only one who protected us Very because good. those bus drivers were crazy, though. Okay. <laughs> they used to be riding, going up hills side by side, racing, racing. Getting a visual. Oh uh, yeah. Not so best. when I think back on it, it was dangerous. yeah, kind of dangerous, but memorable. But memorable. So that was nope. getting there and getting back. Getting no, you're at the alley school. Yeah, you would often be on time or often late mm. because of transportation issues. Um, no, we would be generally on time. Okay. Yeah, okay. generally on time. Who was the principal then? When Mr. Jordan. Jordan, as and in the, the Jordan who yes. still lives today. Yes. And still remembers me. Uh, yeah. So Mr. Jordan was your principal. What was the relationship like with... Um, Mr. Jordan was very strict. Yeah. Yeah, he stood for... He had um, principles that um, would make the school better. I mean, you know, it... it it made us know that we were in a place where we had to do what we had to do. Okay. okay. Yeah. So and you then, call him as and a then, yes. Then Mr. Beckles was the principal, the deputy. Okay. So okay. And you we were well, from Mr. Beckles as deputy. Yes. Interesting. And yeah. I, and I, I felt as well when I when I look back now. Even now in 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 where when I'm working, I think you know. It's important to have order and and people who are in charge who do what they're supposed to do, mm-hmm. and that's one of the things I appreciate when I look back now that they were like that. Okay, structure, yeah. discipline, structure and discipline. So you, no, I was I was a, not that not that kind of trouble. No, I wasn't a trouble person. I was. Um, I got along with the teachers. Okay. I I I loved Miss Bourne. She's she's passed Carol on now. Bourne. Carol Bourne. She was awesome. Um, two of my favorite teachers. What did she teach you? Can she you taught me history. History. I hated history, oh. but I loved Miss Bourne. Okay, okay. She was really nice. Um, Fond memories of her. Yeah, she was a really pleasant person, and she was um, she was kind. Hmm. Um, she wouldn't let me get out of her class, her history class. Although I begged and I begged, I said, well, I'm You Ms. did history Born. right up to fifth form? Okay. I said, Miss Bourne, I don't like reading. I cannot do history. Um, so I did a year with Miss Bourne that I didn't do very well. Okay. This was like because second I, first, I, second third? It was about second form. Okay, okay. Because when you got into third form, then you could choose what you wanted to. Do okay, yeah. And I hated history, but um, I did math with Mr. Aline one year, and Mr. Aline, okay, he was too difficult. <laughs> I remember, I remember there was a year that um, I think I came first in his class. Or the person who came, came first in his class got thirty something percent. Right, right. His, his he was he he did um, like the higher standard in standard of math, I think. Okay. Um, I remember him. I remember, and, and you know, I was very fond of Mr. Ali. He was he was um, a very friendly. You recall his friendly. first name? Keith Allen. Keith, oh, Keith Allen, right, who then became principal at Parkinson. Yes. Okay, it's all coming together. Yes. Right, okay. And then there was Mr. Mahon and Miss Mahon. I loved the two of them. They were like, um, Miss Mahon taught me um, home economics, and I loved home I economics. Heard that name. And I remember 
being in there cooking and she I can basically say she didn't just teach home economics, she taught me how to cook. Okay. She gave she she was a um is Miss Mohan still alive? Yes, yeah, she is. She is. Yes. Okay, I, okay. I actually saw her on the website. Somebody had a picture of her on the website at uh, church last week, Sunday. Okay. Yes. I've heard that name before. Yeah, go ahead. But her her husband also used to teach there. Okay, okay. But he taught metal work. So I, I didn't I didn't do subjects with him. Okay. But he always used to say, You are you remind me so much of my daughter. Their daughter, they had a daughter called Marina Mahan. Marina, okay. Even now, we look, people come to me sometimes and ask me if I'm Marina. Uh, you've, you've met her? You've had the opportunity yes. to meet her? Okay. Yes, I, even that we're at work already. And is he but still around too? So he died. He died. He died. Okay. So, um, uh, there are a lot of the old Miss, Miss Sandy Fur. There was one name. A lady named Miss Sandy, because she was awesome. She was really good. She taught us needlework. That was in the earlier days. These were in the early days. And Mr. Gay, Mr. Gay taught us social studies. Okay. He was a very nice person. And then we had a teacher called Mr. I can't remember what his name was. But he died also. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is there one teacher that? that definitely, apart from those that you've mentioned already, that up to this day stands out in any way in your mind? We had so much awesome teachers. Everyone, everyone stands out in, in some way. Okay. Cool. Um, there, there was a, we had an art teacher, and I don't remember his name either. Not right at this moment. Um, I remember one year I did our, I did we had to do um, figure fi draw some something with people right and I got a plus okay, I, I okay. some 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 guys standing by a house playing dominoes oh and when he looked at it when I was finished it that was this was an exam right and he said wow a plus and I felt really proud of myself. Yeah, motivation. Yeah. So what was your favorite subject? Home school? economics. Home economics. Okay. Home um, economics. Were I you? loved art, but okay. my father said art gets you nowhere. Okay. So <laughs> I noticed that you spoke about growing up with your grandmother. Yeah. Your parents were still in England? My mother was. My mother actually died in England. Okay, as a girl growing up? Okay. No, sorry. She died when I was working. Okay. But, we ne but once she brought us here, we never saw her again. Okay. Yes. She brought us here, she went back, and we never saw her again. So this brought us here, so this is around nine years old. Yes. And you never saw your mother since then? When did she I pass? I never went back to England you either. Never, and neither did she come back? No. But she was born in Barbados yes. and migrated to England. Right, okay. And your father? My father, um, he died in 2008. He and I were very, very, very close. He, he lived in England too, so? He had, he had lived in England, but he left, he left England when we were little children, when we were a lot younger. And uh, came back to Barbados when they, they separated. Okay, okay. Um, but then, when we came to England, to Barbados, his mother is who raised us, my, my grandmother. Okay, okay, I see your grandmother. So, not, having not seen your mother since, since that period, what was that like for you? Um, um, it was kind of difficult because my grandmother, she was also quite strict and okay. she had her favorites. You know, you're not supposed to do that as parents. No, but not even it, as teachers. But, um, <laughs> Is she had? But I guess, I guess if you, because she had raised two of my siblings from babies. Okay. But before she, my mother and my father went to England, they left two, the first two with them. With okay. Her. So. 
I guess she was the first two of yeah. before. Yes. Okay. Uh, it was five. It was. I didn't mention it, the, my brother. Okay. But um. So these five are from the same mother and father. Yes. Okay. Following you. Yes. Right. Okay. And um, the question. So where were you in the rank? I'm, I'm the second last. The second last. Yes. So where was your brother? He's the only male He's the child. Oldest. Yes. He's the eldest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and and for, then there was um, a sister who's now in Canada living. Okay. And then there's, I have a sister who's a, a police officer. One who works at the NDC now. She's the youngest of the five. Okay. But I also have other sisters. And so they're all, they're still yeah. all around? Yeah. Right. I, okay. And only, my, only my brother died. Your yeah. younger, you said he was the young. He was the oldest. He was the eldest and yeah. he, he passed. So when did mom pass? Um, I did not know. I can't remember. But you, you were working, you were I in your adult. At CDS at right, time. okay. That's Caribbean Data Services. Yeah. Right, okay, okay. I so I do, had a few years there. Do you have memories? For, um, are, are there memories still there of, of mom? Or is it. Um, very very vaguely um, but my mother she, she was basically not not very well okay so my memories growing up in England were not very pleasant okay okay um, we spent a lot of time in children's homes okay okay different children's homes so there are some that were more pleasant than some okay and you know, you have the memories of the, the good memories of the ones where you really enjoyed your your stay, and then there were some very bad memories. Right. So there wasn't really a strong relationship there. So when she died, you really never, never obviously never got to attend uh, the funeral no. or or see. So there are no pictures of, of, of mom. That um, there was one. Um, a year ago, I showed it to my daughter. Okay. And I said, who's this? She said, that's you. She looked like you? Yeah. Or you look like her? Uh, yes. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> it was quite interesting because everybody thought it was me. Okay, but you still cherish that picture? That I, picture I don't, I don't, don't have it anymore. I okay. am not sure uh -huh. if my sister has it. Okay, but okay. Trust me. If you want to know what my mother looked like, look, look at you. Okay, yeah. for sure. But your strongest relationship was with dad, who yeah. passed in 2008. Yeah. And I, I, listening to you, I get the sense that there, there are more stronger memories. Yes, yeah, there. Um, we used to play dominoes together. We used to, if he, especially when he was in his latter time when he was sick, right. um, he would call me and tell me come up and let's play a game that time he um, lived alone he, he, no, lived he alone. had his wife oh okay and two my my, my stepmother and two other children yeah. okay okay who are still around yeah right okay yeah. do you keep in touch with them yes of course okay okay <laughs> they're all my sisters but you would obviously have i, I get in sense perhaps you may have more pictures of dad um yes because um, I guess he was my only parent. Parent, that's that was um, He used to teach people to drive, so okay. Um, he taught me how to drive. He he would teach me make sure that everybody, um, once they get to that age, they learn how to drive. Okay, okay. Um, he loved his grandchildren, so my children, he, you know, he, he used to always make sure that they they they're well taken care of and there was a period of time about just before he died when I was very very ill yeah and I could probably add in here right here that at that time also Alan spoke came to my defense some Alenians came to help help you know because at one point I really needed blood right um, this is you personally and not yes. that right okay and um, he became ill during that same time yes. right okay um, I was um, very, very in the hospital. But when he died, I was, I, I, I guess it made it even worse because you know the stress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, at one point when they needed to have an operation, um, some people came out and it was, 
it was like my family could not no longer give blood for me because it was so much that was needed oh i see yeah. so you had to extend your reach yeah, they didn't okay. know where to turn because you know people are not always willing to give blood yeah um and some some of the avenues say mr beckles and okay and, and mr beckles remembers you daydree cox okay. and so daydree was in daydree was in she here she was in fifth form and i was in first oh so and she's actually my first are you serious yeah my first so i mean she's older than you are <laughs> i would never imagine that deidre is five years older than you are and actually when i first my first few days or few weeks going to Aline, she would take me to school and bring me home deidre oh so she she, she was lived driven in Hall at the time and oh um my grandmother arranged that i would go so she was her. driven to school yes okay okay no we we used to get right to town and back oh so I come home with her uh i see because she's the older one yeah. so she was a big sister yeah. chaperone then <laughs> okay so so we're at any school you're you you've you've moved from first to second second to third what was the highlight? Which year was the highlight of your um, Annie School experience? Is there one particular year? First year. Your first year. Because you're you're in a new school. You're traveling a distance that y you know you you have never traveled alone. With you know without having mm -hmm. parents and stuff with you. Um, when you go to this school. There was at the time a lot of prefab buildings. The school was basically prefab buildings, um, so that was that was strange to me. But then and then going, you know, in primary school you have one classroom where you do everything. So then you're going to secondary school where you you have a class here and then you have another class there, or the teacher comes to you different teachers come in and it was it was yeah, it was, it, was a, it it was a whole new experience and you know um at school Allen school offered you know you know the activities on Tuesday afternoons that was still, that was all the way back then yes okay okay so that that still to this day continues yes okay. um my first activity and it was built into the curriculum yes and that was awesome I still think that's really awesome. Yeah, it really because is. then you because remember I said my grandmother used to quarrel when I got home at a certain time late. Were late. So if activities were after school, I could not join anything. Yeah. So it was to me it was absolutely awesome. Listening to you speak, chatting with first farmers and students coming in, mm -hmm. you know the. If, they, if you were to ask them what would what is one of their major highlights is that bus that the transportation is still a major issue right and they ride from bridgetown because most of our students are living in st michael and st george limited few are coming from st joseph and st andrew but you know when i went to school at Allen, they didn't have those bypass buses that i see going mm -hmm. all that that pass where i used to live you had to go into town oh, i had to go into town i walked to pelican yeah. and they have the buses, buses coming to them and they would recount the the drive the drive for them some can be tired so your experience is still being experienced by students today yeah and but i don't think it's as harsh no no definitely i really not. don't think it's as no. harsh because you have we had to all head to the pelican bus stand to get a bus they have buses coming from weymouth that pass yeah. through tweet road Hill, and go st george and you know i think that they, it's it's a little easier for them Your students and need to hear this yeah you hear them whine and complain but there there are Armenians who attend the school where they were off oh. and then then on evenings getting a bus to go home you had to wait until the bus comes into the schoolyard the school buses and sometimes they weren't you, you didn't if you didn't catch the school bus you were in trouble right, right. you were in trouble you had to um so, I, go ahead, go ahead. I remember one evening 
a group of us walked all down to where they have the fruit, those, those, that fruit. Um, the, you know, there are some, some mango trees and what do you call out there? Ashford? Not Ashford. Um, Soil conservation. Maybe? Somewhere, yes, down yeah. there. We walked all the way down there um, to catch a bus at evening. Okay. That I would mean, chalky looks like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it was hard getting buses. It really was. But I mean, we enjoyed that evening because we stole and somebody. This was we a we this was we common. <laughs> this is not my hard catching buses. Yeah, this we is just the common feature yes. of going to school. At, at school. We enjoyed those mangoes, though. I'm just saying. <laughs> so there was there was exposure to lots of food. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah, we used to go and pick um, cashews and fat porks. Guavas. Yeah, gua um, I'm not so remembering guavas so much as fat porks. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, we used to go up in the fat pork walk and pick them and stuff. So you, you smoothly transitioned from first right up to fifth line. Yes, I can, I, can, I can say so. But as I said, it was a totally different experience. It was... It was, it, you know, and then too, because I am in a household with people going to Alexander, I am listening to what they are saying and what is happening in our school. Yeah. And thinking these schools are so different. You yeah, know, but. This is not the same. No, but I am, I am still happy that I went to Aline. Was it difficult leaving? No, so you're in fifth form now? Mm -hmm. CXC exams. Tell us about that transition from being a secondary school student to going out there into the wider world. Guide us from there, from fifth form right through. How, how was that transition like? In fifth form, fifth form was not my best year. Um, I guess because issues with my grandmother and okay. yeah so fifth form was not really my best year and then by then a lot of my friends had left okay. um I, I i think it was kind of a lonely year for me um i didn't i didn't do the subjects that i wanted to do at cxc well um i remember i remembered i wanted to do to be a home economics teacher. Okay, okay. I really wanted that with all my heart. And the last year they changed the teacher. Oh. Yes. Is and Miss Mahon retired? Yes. Okay. Um, my last year they changed her and the teacher who came entered me for basic. Oh. And that just totally killed you off. Yeah, it totally killed my enthusiasm. I begged her not uh, to change it, to change it. I mean, I used to come Boy, first in that subject all the first. time. I was hurt. Whoa. I was hurt. And I think that that is... So you did, you eventually yeah. did the basic exam or you... I did the exam, but... I remember that I was one of the only people who was entered for basic. And... Okay. Okay. When um, they called the time, apparently we had the same paper but less time. Okay. Or, or, I don't know if we had the same paper, but it was a lot less time. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I didn't do very well in that. I was, okay. I was really, really disappointed. Right, so that would yeah. have set the context for your subsequent years. Yeah. So, so then, uh, when I left school, um, I worked with... Um, so we are now in the 80s. You graduated in 1983. Yeah. And so we are within the 83, mm -hmm. 84 era. Yeah. No. So you went straight to work. Yeah. Right. So how, how was that? Yeah. For you? I, I, I really miss school. Right. Um, I wanted to go back and do, do some other mm -hmm. subjects and stuff, but I didn't get that opportunity because um, it wasn't it wasn't viable at the time um but then sometime during my life i decided okay um 
well shortly after I was working at Caribbean Data Services yeah. and at Caribbean Data Services I, I, I excelled I, okay. I, they would bring in new jobs and I would do the lead part for all the different, a lot of different you jobs. You working there? Yeah. I that was an awesome place to work. It yeah. was very, very, it was a very, especially as a training ground for subsequent years. Good years. employees. I think it was an awesome How place to work. How many years did you spend with CBS? Um, ten. Ten. Okay, okay. And um, because they required you to work at, um, a fast pace but have a very high standard of work. Remind us, what, what happened at CDS? What, what um, they did, what they, they did, did data processing. Okay, they were an international company? Yes, our biggest client was American Airlines okay. and we would process, do, it was like doing the the accounts, breaking down the accounts for American Airlines. Okay, <coughs> that would include a printing <coughs> Tickets and, and no, there. after the tickets have been sold, okay. it will be okay. yeah balancing uh, the reports and putting the information into the database. Um, we did the personnel records in okay. terms of pay, payroll and stuff. Um, we processed the tickets, and that was a really big job because. You know, American Airlines has ticket offices all over yeah. the world. You had to learn. <laughs> you had to learn the ticket office numbers, um, area codes, numbers. They numbered each one. Each each um, office was numbered. So you had like this book with all the different area codes, all the different codes. Yeah. There was a, I, I think it was an eight-digit number. So you would have. Um, how we le we would learn it with a rhythm zero six three one zero one ten two, you know, and that was one that was one number. So in in order to be able to work fast, you have to know mm -hmm. Chicago is right. three 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 um zero sixty three ten whatever it is, you know, and this is Chicago or here, and then they got Chicago this other. One. So it was, yeah. um, it was really intense. It was you had to focus on what you were doing. So you learned to concentrate, do your work properly, make sure that you don't have any errors in your work because when you got errors and you work fast and you get your incentive building, yeah. if you got too much errors, you're, you, you can lose your incentive. Right, right. Okay, okay. <laughs> then we used to work lots and lots of overtime. So it, it gave um, the employees a chance to better themselves in life. Okay. Um, there have been good times, hard times, bad times, and okay times. Number one, you have. <laughs> yes. Still, I still um, had ties with some of my and in school colleagues. Um, there's one who, in particular, she and I have been friends from first form in Alien School. And we are still best friends now. She is Esther Husband. Yes. Yeah. Well, her name has changed now. But and um, I remember I was ill in 2000, from 2005 to 2007. That's when I was really, really ill in okay. hospital. Um, and things, you know, Things were a bit difficult at that point, but then I started to work at shortly after that. Once I got over my my operation, everything I was working at um, Barbados Licensing Authority okay. for a while. Things improved tremendously. I you know I kept in contact with her, and then there the, when my my hip started to give trouble. Oh. Okay. Um, I had, they said it was a static nerve that was, it just, I don't know where, how it started. She was there to assess, she, she, I remember she took about six weeks home with me to go to my therapy sessions to help me, you know, just, ha and it really got me back on my feet. Right. Yeah. She, 
and and, and, and she and I had so to our children. Yeah, we yeah we are the same age. Her daughter is. Yeah, 52. 52, going to be 53. In September, good. I'm the, first, the second. Second, okay. Um, her daughter is the same age as my daughter. And then she, she and I have, the, the, our second child is this, about the same age. I attended a lot, almost all of the fish fries since 2008. Yeah, Kathy told us. Yeah, you were an active supporter. Yes, I love them. I, 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 I have been to everyone since then. And then there was a reunion. I worked with them with the reunion, and that was very good. I okay. really enjoyed that. that. Was, that which one was that? The year, the, the, the year when we had people coming in. It was a whole week. Okay, it was okay. a massive That's thing. Okay, yes. Okay. We had like a week of activities and... I got you. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember recall which year it was. Yes, it was awesome. Um, so, during my lifetime, I, there has always been things like that that have um, there, there made good memories. To, like you said Esther? Yeah, Esther Esther. Husband. There are other there are other Alenians who Sylvia but then are still around and you're in close contact. Yeah, with. Sylvia. She um she's coming to get tickets. Okay. Um, so we'll be seeing Sylvia. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually no. She wants us to meet her on the front row, yes. <laughs> um then there's um oh when I was sick in um um, in hospital I remember there was a memory I had of one of the I, I, I had so much bad experiences with the nurses who were you know they had, they were bringing in a lot of nurses from all different countries yeah. and stuff and they don't want to touch you you know okay but I remember one time I was in an accident emergency and I was in a really bad state and the way I believe her name was Winsome. She's a nurse. She treated me so well. I was so proud of her. Great. I was so proud to be an Alini and I to, so but and to she know her. Nurse she yeah, she was a local okay, nurse. Okay. She was a local nurse. She went to school at Aline. Oh, okay. What, what, I, can you recall her name? Watson Winsome Watson, I think. Um actually I just felt as though she was an awesome nurse first and then there was this um, because she knew me pleasantness it was it was really really good so which year we're in now we're in the 2005 7 6 we're all over the place well, right. okay, yeah okay. <laughs> in 2013 I started to get um, issues with my hip where I found that it was becoming the pain on my leg was becoming um, a challenge for me to, okay. to walk. It came on, but it was gradually getting more and more intense. They said it was uh, the sciatic nerve. It's like, it's sciatic or sciatic? <laughs> yeah, the nerve was uh, being pinched at the time. It's really painful. And I mean, there were times when I was at work where you're walking and then you feel as though you have no leg under you. <laughs> it was it, it 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 got to that point. So this is susceptible yes. to a fall. Then, yes, or? that's one of the that's one of the reasons why. Um, sometimes if I'm in the house and I'm like if I'm walking through the uh, hallway, I might not walk with my walker. Okay. Most of the times I do because I've had too many experiences where. I'm walking and I feel as though my, my leg is You're no longer there. The and then you yeah, and then I, I feel as though I'm just going to fall. I don't want to fall. It's not there. Have you ever had a toothache? Uh, yes. Imagine a toothache in your head. Oh, <laughs> yes. Pleasant. Not okay. pleasant. It has gotten worse. It has gotten worse. It has gotten worse in that um, the pain starts from up in my back. 
you know it radiates out from right. the hip um, yeah. I have problems bending I have problems getting into my bed lying down on my hip or lying down because on the other the side pain. yeah I can't lie on the hip because of the pain, but when I so lie on the other side, on one side or is it more? yeah this side this side hurts as well okay um but n because this the right hip is so bad, I don't really notice that this one is okay it, yeah well, you're it, but when I, if I touch it and I will realize oh there's pain here as well okay most <laughs> of the pain is on the yes. other side and because I used to give a lot of um, I used to put a lot of weight on this I had I walked with a stick at first yeah and so this knee is gone as well right. because this took a lot of the weight then because you have trouble bending I have trouble if I if if I move my at this point right, right. if I move my my toe I feel as though my whole leg is gonna go into cramp I can yeah. feel it all out here going up into cramp Beautiful. yeah if you I will share my thing is I know that there are people who are in some really horrible situations mm -hmm. that mine might pale to compare with and you know and and and, and I, I I give them that respect the respect that is due to them right. but <clears throat> I am speaking about my issues yeah. I have pain I have less pain walking with the walker walking I mean in terms of my hip walking right. than I have when I'm lying down when I'm yes. sitting sometimes when I am bending the pain really is terrible it's not just pain it's also this feeling that you, it's, your body is so stiff you can't bend it right. um, um, then there's the cramping the cramp it goes in it, when it goes into cramp I remember driving recently and I was so upset to think that I can't just maybe just now I won't be able to drive my car because my leg cramped so badly that I could not drive yeah so recently I have not been driving a lot but yeah. I still need to get where I have to go the, the, the cramping is, is random it yes. just come on yes and, right. and I cannot stay quiet too long because then recently I ended up in the hospital with blood clots in my lungs. Okay, okay. Um, so now they have me on blood thinners. Okay. And that brings its own problems because I need to get the surgery. I was trying to do some weight. The hip the, surgery. The, the, this is hip replacement. Yes, the hip right. replacement. Using the walkers. I already had carpal tunnel. They did they, 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 the test in, at the hospital. And because this this like this finger is numb, this this thumb, this finger, the two of them were getting numb sensations. So they did the testing at the hospital on the nerves in my hands and said both hands have carpal tunnel. But because I walk with a walker, um, I have like two corns. Yeah, the pain is right yeah. sure. And the pain, the pain is worse in my hands. My shoulders, I have a lot of pain in my shoulders. Um, I have arthritis from my neck right down. So the... arthritis? Yes. So the plan was to have the stem cell treatment done in England because it's not offered here in Barbados. Um, but my priority would be to get my hip done. Once I had, I would have, I, once I acquired the money to do my hip, that is my priority. If I'm getting it done here in Barbados, the doctors have said well they don't have parts at the hospital the, the, yes the, the surgeons said that they as long as you bring in everything that they need 
they would do the surgery for free. Okay. So I can get it done for free in, in Barbados. If, okay. if I do it in the States, I've heard people say that they spent $180,000 um, only last year to go and get their hip done over in, in, in the States or in, in, in England and that. Okay. But if I do it here, we don't have to pay for the, the, uh, you know, the other things um, that will apply if you do it overseas. Um, to bring in the parts, I spoke to the, the gentleman who brings them in. He said, basically the total cost of bringing in everything would be about... $2,200.